Okay, it looks a little better, doesn't it? Check this out. And all it took was a little pressure washing with a low pressure electric washer and what a difference. We also cleaned the engine up a little bit, you know, got rid of the rat's nest and what on. And, and, and so in this segment, I want to talk about, you know, getting an old diesel running that sat for a long time. So when you're thinking about a 1975 to 1995 Mercedes diesel, the challenge to get one running that sat for a long time is different from a gasoline engine. Uh, sometimes it can be easier, sometimes it could be more difficult. Kind of depends on a lot of, a lot of factors, but in this case I kind of lucked out. And I want you to watch the other video in this series on uh, 75 to 95 Mercedes titled Finding a Diamond in the Rough, and you'll get to see the whole story how we ended up with this car. You know, I have to admit that uh, it took me 12 minutes to get it running and driving down the road after we pulled an old tattered car cover off of it. And I normally wouldn't do this. You know, if it was an old car I was going to buy, I'd bring it home and drain the fuel and, you know, go through a bunch of stuff, check brakes and everything. But I wanted that motorcycle. I was going to get a free motorcycle if I could get this car running and going down the road. And so it ran so well, I ended up buying it. And we, you know, we've cleaned it up. Now we're ready to really go to work and deal with some of the real issues when you have a diesel that has sat for a long time. We're talking over three or four years. You know, maybe up to that two years, you're going to have some minor problems, but you get over three or four years, you got issues with brakes, issues with old tires, issue with uh, uh, deteriorated rubber parts like flex discs, motor mounts. You have all the fluids, all the filters have to be changed. And the very first thing we're gonna do with this 240D here, I've got my trusty floor jack, I've got my jack stands. We're gonna jack this up in the air and we're gonna drain the fuel, we're gonna pull the tank screen. You'll get a chance to see what that fuel tank screen looks like inside. Then we're going to come back, change the filters here in the engine compartment, and put fresh fuel in it. And then the work will continue. We'll go on with the, the, the oil change and the coolant change and so on. But when you get one of these old diesels, if you can, you know, get it back to where you live or back to your shop or whatever and get that fuel drained out of it and get new fuel in it, get those filters changed, and don't forget to check the tires and the brakes before you do any real road testing. The fuel is completely drained out of this 240D. We still got up in the air because we're not finished yet. Now, there's a couple more things I need to talk about and show you when you are draining the fuel in these old diesels. Um, we didn't have a lot of problem, but we did get a little surprise as we almost got 15 gallons of fuel out of this tank when the gauge was saying half a tank. So it did indeed uh, prove me right. You got to really be careful. Don't trust these gauges when you get ready to drain the fuel. I'm glad I had a, a three five gallon containers ready to go when we started the draining process. And it's completely dry now. And before we lower it back down and put the diesel fuel back in the tank, let me show you some of the other issues that you should be looking at if you're doing this on your own car. I want to show you the fuel that we drained out of the tank. You know, it doesn't look that bad. It smells old, but you can see from the coloration here, it probably didn't have algae in it. You know, this is something you really have to be concerned about when these diesels have, have sat for so long. If you've got fuel that's brownish, kind of a brownish, dark, blackish color, it may mean there's algae in the tank and you're going to have probably some issues with having to clean the inside of the fuel tank as well. But this fuel came out like this, um, and uh, you know I'm thinking, oh great! And even when we pull the fuel tank screen, and this is something you want to do every time you drain this old fuel. Don't just drain the fuel and put new fuel in. You need to remove these fuel tank screens because a lot of these, a lot of times, these will be all gummed up with old fuel that sat in the tank for a long time. We have on our website couple special tools we make for removing these fuel tank screens. This takes a very large hex wrench and very few people have that. So I came up with this uh, little tool that we weld together that will allow you to go in, just use a normal socket like you see here, and you can get on that and remove that tank screen with very little effort. So we're, we got some junk and crud along the base here. We'll clean this up and probably replace the o-ring and then we're going to reinstall this in the fuel tank the other issue when you're doing this is 
nine times out of ten, the rubber fuel hoses, you usually have two, some tanks have three, but you have an outlet hose and then you have a return hose on these old diesels and they're going to be rotten, okay? And the 114, 115 chassis takes a special outlet hose. It's larger on one end than it is on another. It's pretty hard to fabricate this yourself. So if you're looking for one of these to replace on your own uh, 115 diesel, uh, you know, check these out on our website. So we're going to replace both rubber hoses back there and with new clamps. Then we'll lower the car down and put about five gallons of fuel in it. We're not going to fill it up until we make sure there's no leaks and the, and the engine's running okay. And then we're going to move forward and we'll start through the process of changing the fuel filter, uh, the engine oil, and so on. I should mention that not all old Mercedes diesels have these type of fuel screens. This type of fuel screen was in the W114 and 115 chassis and was also in the W123 station wagon which had a similar fuel tank. And of course this special tool that we make here uh, just fits those types of tank screens. Now in the other models like the W107, 116, 123, 126 and so on, the tank screen is uh, very large like this. It requires a large socket. Now what we've done is we have created a special socket. <laughs> this is quite a job doing this but we cut these, we weld on a 17 millimeter bolt on the end so you're, you're able to get this up underneath the car above the axle and get on this tank screen like that. Okay. And then you don't have to have any special ratchet wrenches. You can use a normal 17 millimeter and get on this and break the tank screen loose on these other models. Now, just for fun, let's go ahead and take this one out and see what it looks like. Okay, look at that. You can start to see the buildup. It's not that bad, but it's definitely something that if this keeps moving up the screen when you get low on fuel, you would have a power loss problem. I, I've seen a lot worse than this, but this is something that we'll want to clean before we reinstall. And then, of course, check inside the tank. Uh-oh, look at this. We have a lot of junk inside that tank. You see what I'm saying? There's probably moisture and algae's been in this tank. So if you see a dirty tank screen like this, don't just assume you clean the screen and put it back in the tank. You're going to have to clean the tank, flush the tank out. And I've seen tanks so bad that you have to replace it with a good use tank. I have a video on my website, a video instruction manual on how to replace these old fuel tanks. If you run into a situation where the tank is filthy, dirty, and rusty inside, even if you take it in for repair, you're going to have to remove the tank from the vehicle. So there it is. Another special tools made at MercedesSource.com to provide solutions to common problems on these old Benzes. We were fortunate in this old Benz here that we didn't have to deal with a fuel tank problem. It didn't have algae in there. There wasn't any rust in there. When we dropped that fuel tank screen out, I reached my finger up in there and it was really clean. So I feel rather fortunate. We put the new screen in, we replaced those rubber hoses on the back, and we lowered it down. But the work has just begun. We're not done yet. This isn't ready to drive down the road. Uh, I need to do some additional service, and we're going to start with f fluids and filters, okay? I want to change all the fluids. I want to change all the filters. And then uh, we've got other issues that we've got to look at, which you know are outside just the engine running. These are brakes and tires and shocks, and checking the exhaust system, and so on. So we'll continue on in this video series, okay? Going through a lot of these things that you might go through if you pick up one of these old Mercedes-Benz. And there are some unique things about the W115 chassis, particularly when it comes to fluid and filter service. It's quite a bit different. Okay, first off, the fuel filter is not spin-on, like on the newer models. The fuel filter is in a canister, it ha this has to be taken out and you have to replace the filter. The oil filter is accessed from underneath the car. That's one of the reasons why I like uh, the one when they came up with the oil filter up top in the 123 chassis. I thought, wow, isn't that handy? You can change the filter without even getting... 
under the car, but you have to get under the car, pull the canister off. So what I'm, what I'm doing is I'm doing a complete video instruction series on servicing a W115 diesel. That'd be a, a 220D, a 240D, or a 300D up to 1976. And I'm going to talk about specifically about the proper way to change the pre-filter. Now, uh, most of the pre-filters that you get at these auto parts stores or even from some places online, they're milky in color. I don't like these, okay? I don't like these at all. We only sell clear, clear pre-filters which allow you to look in and see just what's coming from the fuel tank. And you can look down in here and see I've already installed a new pre-filter in this 240D here and I've replaced the fuel hoses. So we've got, we've got the, the new pre-filter, the new fuel hoses. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to change the, the fuel filter, and then we're going to change the oil filter. And I, I highly recommend you do this yourself. If you haven't already seen my other videos on some of the reasons why you should learn to do your own service on your car, then we'll put some links in the show more description of this video. Because I tell you, you cannot believe the horror stories I'm hearing. And they seem to get worse every year about people taking their old benzes in to get them worked on. And oh man, not, we're talking about mistakes. We're talking about false diagnosis, misdiagnosis, overcharging, and sometimes pure stupidity, okay? So we're gonna kind of help you as we go along in this multi-part series in 75 to 95 Mercedes to try to work you through some of these things. I'll warn you about problems. I'll show you little tips and tricks. I'll show you tools you can use. But if you, if you have, okay, we're going to go ahead now and we're going to start going through this whole fluid and filter changes on this car, including the antifreeze. We're going to change the power steering fluid. We're going to change the transmission fluid. We're going to change the rear end fluid. And then we'll get, when we got it up in the air, we're going to start inspecting the suspension brakes and so on. So if, you're, if you have one of these cars specifically, because these are really different than most of the newer ones, particularly the diesels, uh, you might want to check out the links below in the show more. Uh, description under this video and I'll just you know I'm working on these so you might not see some of these right away when this video goes up but I am working on a lot of new manuals um, we're working on some new kits because there's a lot of people out there that are are emailing us and expressing a renewed interest in these old W115 diesels and gas cars that were built from the late 60s up to 1976 so uh, I hope I hope you found this little video helpful in what might be required when you go out and pick up an old Mercedes diesel that hasn't run for a long time. I'll get situated here. The wind's kind of blowing around here, so I want to I want to kind of make sure I'm ready and in the right position before I start. Okay, rolling after four seconds. <laughs> 